everybody, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to be making an icebox fruit cake. And don't you leave me because I know what you're thinking. I don't care for fruit cake, so I'm not gonna watch this. Well, Doug came through the kitchen as I was getting all of my ingredients out, and he said, What are you making? And I said, I'm making an icebox fruit cake. He said, Oh yes, that's good stuff. So if Doug Halstead likes Icebox Fruit Cake, I'm sure that you're going to love it as well. I'm going to start out this morning by telling you the ingredients that I'm going to be using. And that's why you're going to love this Icebox Fruit Cake. It is not your traditional fruit cake that you bake in the oven and you have all of those candied fruits. It is not that at all. So let me tell you what I put in this Icebox fruit cake. And by the way, it's a non-bake. You just put it together, put it in your refrigerator, and enjoy eating it. I'm using graham crackers, the plain graham crackers, one box, which has three packages in it. I'm using a quart of chopped pecans. A quart is four cups. I'm using a large package of the large marshmallows. This is 12 ounces. I'm using a small pack of coconut. This is sweetened coconut and it's seven ounces. I'm also using a box of raisins. Now these are dark raisins and I use them because my mama did. But you can use the light ones if you want to or I'll go so far as to say that if you don't care for raisins or if you don't care for any one particular item in this recipe, then you probably could just leave it out. But we love all of the items that are included in the recipe. And then I'm using a 10 ounce bottle of maraschino cherries. This is not the candied cherries that you use in an old-fashioned baked fruitcake. These are maraschino, and I'll show you how I'm going to work with those as well. So I'm going to leave you for just a minute, and I'm gonna get all this opened up. I'm not gonna uh, take time to do that because I know that you know how to open packages. And when I get it all opened up and put in my uh, containers, then I'll come back and we'll make the Icebox fruit cake. The first thing that I did was open my marshmallows and I put them in this large saucepan and I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of milk. I'm gonna place this on the stove on a very low heat and I'm going to melt the marshmallows. Now it might be that I need to add a little bit more milk a little later as we mix all of this together, but if I do, you'll see that I'm doing that at the appropriate time. So I'm gonna set this on the stove, and I'm gonna tell you about the other ingredients. The graham crackers I put in a plastic bag and I crushed them. I was unable to crush them in the bags that they came in like I do Ritz crackers or saltine crackers. So I just took these out and one sleeve at the time or one package at the time, I just put them in a gallon plastic bag and crushed them. And then I used my rolling pin and crushed them a little bit finer. You'll see that it still has some kind of larger pieces in it, which is great. So we start out with our graham crackers. To that, I'm going to add the raisins. Now I did cut these raisins. I took the time, it was kind of tedious, but I put them on a little cutting board and I just cut the raisins in half. So really what I'm doing now is just mixing our dry ingredients. You'll see that I'm wearing gloves to make this because it, it kind of um, turns into dough and you want it to be mixed really well. And so at some point, I'm probably going to put my hands um, in it and work with it with my hands like it was dough. 
The next thing that I'm going to add are the pecans. And remember, this is a quart of pecans or four cups. So I'm just gonna mix that around. This makes a large cake. Uh, it stores well, it keeps in the refrigerator. In fact, the longer you keep it in there, the better it gets. Next, I'm going to add the coconut. And I'm gonna mix that around. And I think I will just take my hands at this point. See all of these wonderful ingredients. You're gonna love this, just like Doug loves it, and I love it too. And I'm pouring it out, of, or making it come out of this little pan. Goodness gracious, I'm wasting our food. So you just mix your dry ingredients like this. Oh yum, that looks good. I could just eat that. That almost looks like trail mix. So I'm gonna just keep this right here and I'm gonna tell you about the cherries. I separated the cherries from the juice and I'm saving the juice. Now I'm not gonna add this right now. I'm gonna add it a little bit later after I uh, melt the marshmallows. But I did cut the cherries into small pieces. So I'm just gonna set this aside and I'm gonna go over to the stove and I'm gonna finish melting the marshmallows and I'll come back and I'll show you what we're going to do next. Okay, we have our marshmallows melted uh, with the butter. I melted it on medium low. So I'm going to try something different today. Uh, normally, I just use my hands and arms and um, mix my uh, cake, but I think a little bit later as this gets tougher, I think I'm going to add um, or try to use my mixer because it's gonna get really, really hard to mix. And I've never used a mixer, so we'll just kinda see how that goes. So I'm adding my dry ingredients. I'm just gonna stir this around. I'm gonna go ahead and add the cherries to put a little bit more liquid in it. And add the cherry juice, add some cherry juice. This gives it color too, it's so pretty. I'll just mix this around like this. You can tell it's beginning to get stiffer. And this is hot, so you'll want to be careful with it. Continue adding dry ingredients. Just like that. Mix it around. Add some more dry ingredients. In fact, I think I'm just gonna pour the rest of these in here. And then I'm going to add the rest of my cherry juice and see if I can mix this up. I may be fortunate enough that I don't have to use the mixer. My mama never used a mixer, but I was thinking this morning as I was working with this and planning about what I was going to cook and show you today that I could speed things up by using the mixer. But I think I'm just gonna be able to do this with my hands using this wooden spoon. Mmm, this is looking so good and it smells delicious too. I went ahead and uh, lightly buttered uh, the uh, baking dish that I'm gonna be use, uh, putting it in even though we're not gonna be baking it. I am using one of my baking dishes uh, to put this in. So what I'm going to do now is get my dish over here, show it to you, and show you how I'm going to pack this fruit cake. Okay, you can see that I have lightly buttered this dish. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take my hands 
and finish mixing this just to make sure that everything is mixed really, really well. Okay, that feels good. That feels like it's just right. So now I'm gonna transfer it over into my dish, just like that. Yum, I can't wait. Look at that, this is so good. Oh man. Okay, now what you want to do is just to pat it down, to smooth it out and pat it down. like that, make it even. And then once you get this done, you just put it in, uh, wrap it really tight, put it in your refrigerator and forget about it if that's possible. So there you have it. Just gonna take these gloves off. Gonna put it right here so you can see it. And uh, I can't wait to have a piece. Okay, friends, that's how you make an icebox fruit cake. I hope you'll try one. I hope that you will share this video with your friends. Just hit that share button and hit that like button because during the holidays, everybody's looking for new and old recipes. So I hope you have a blessed day and I will see you again really soon with something else that we're gonna cook up.